exiting Bishop's Bayou off the northern point is a mostly red mangrove bird island about 100 feet by 75 feet and 25 feet tall. Probably a spoil island formed when the original channel was dredged. This is a good example of unnatural landforms that are a plus to the environment today. As we continue north on the Longboat Key shoreline, there are a few remnants of a narrow mangrove fringe, enough to speculate that this was a historic fringe area and that most of the mangroves have been removed. The shoreline can be characterized as a historic mangrove area with medium to low wave energy, so it should be possible to revegetate some of these areas with care. The mangroves that remain are a great asset to this shoreline, so they should be cultivated and augmented. At the northeast point of Longbow Key is the entrance to Savarese Bayou, which is about 1,800 feet long and has a little over half mangrove shoreline and less than half seawall shoreline. A historic mangrove fringe was removed where the seawalls exist today. This vital bayou has a large fish population and is frequented by manatees. A good balance has been established here with the mangroves benefiting the seawall property. Here is a good time to review the condition of the whole Sarasota Bay area. With one half mangrove and one half seawall, a balance is achieved. Removing any more mangroves would certainly threaten this balance. Adding twice as many people would hurt the balance. Adding twice as many people and removing more of the mangroves would definitely alter the vital environment that is seen today. Today we have a vital environment with clean air, water, and fish, and wildlife that populate the bay. No miracle of science will help the bay if mangroves continue to be removed. One thing is certain, as more people move to the Sarasota Bay area, the natural environment will become more important in offsetting the impact of the increase in human population. Sarasota Bay is at the balance point with one half mangroves and one half seawalls like Savarese Bayou. Going north from Savarese Bayou, there are a few mangroves on the north shoreline of Longboat Key until Beer Can Rear Island. The shore is dynamic here with frequent sudden changes in its slope and gradient, which prevents mangrove seedlings from becoming established by washing them away or covering them. The few mangroves that remain in these conditions have found a place that is artificially stabilized by rocks or other structures. An example of this is around the old bridge base next to the existing bridge. Here, a few mangrove trees have been protected. A large extent of mangroves in the embayment of Beer Can, Rear Island, has formed over the past 50 years and is a valuable habitat for wildlife, including songbirds, wading birds, and snook at high tide. This peninsula, popularly referred to as an island, belongs to the Manatee County and has provided the public with high aesthetic and recreation values, along with filtering the air and water. An access point is available from several parking areas on Longboat Key and by boat. Its isolated location makes it less frequented and more desirable because of its natural beauty. This is one of the many areas throughout the bay that needs to be clearly recognized for the important values they offer to the environment and the public. Any plan for maintenance dredging of the past should consider the importance of this public resource to the whole area. Recently, dredging the canal too close to the island has caused severe erosion to its north point. A thin band of beach protects valuable mangroves and seagrasses that currently provide a nursery area for fish and habitat for wildlife and birds. In this North Longbow Key Pass area, Manatee County has great responsibilities to cultivate a large marine park. Beer Can, Greer Island, Coquina Beach, Lefis Key, Bird Island off Cortez, the Spoil Islands off Paradise Bay Trailer Park, New College, Tidy Island Preserve, Jewfish Key Preserve, and Sister Keys should be considered a related Manatee County Marine Park area. This could serve many purposes, including preserving the nature areas and increasing the value as a recreation area. There does not have to be an overall management plan other than first declaring the whole area a marine park. Nothing needs to change other than the way people look at the area. Jewfish Key and Sister Keys are islands in the middle of North Sarasota Bay with large mangrove extents. Jewfish Key is privately owned with a large mangrove reserve area on the east side to offset the developed area. This type of negotiated, mitigated settlement offers the public protected nature areas 
and reduce density at no cost to the government while adding taxpayers to help support the local government. Compared to the possibility of the government acquiring these areas, this option has several advantages. Sister Keys is currently for sale by private owners and offers the alternatives of acquisition or negotiated density reduction, along with setting aside a large nature preserve. These two vital healthy islands, an important asset to the Bay system, are the last mangrove areas on Sarasota Bay to be discussed in this survey. The future use of Jewfish Key was decided two years ago, and the future use of Sister Keys is in question now. The options of government acquisition or regulated private ownership offer a contrast that will be more common in the future as other areas of Florida become built out. Sister Keys is the last large island in Sarasota Bay system to offer these alternatives. It will be valuable to weigh the advantages and disadvantages of regulation and acquisition using these two islands as examples. Jewfish Key was zoned and platted for 40 homes around 1954 by Manatee County. The island remained in the ownership of one family for almost 30 years between that time and the late 1980s. This family desired to sell the island to regain the investment of time and money spent on its purchase and taxes. The town of Longboat Key and other government agencies were offered the opportunity to buy the island and refused. A group of private owners bought the island in the late 1980s. The use of Jewfish Key was negotiated with the zoning departments of the town of Longboat Key and Manatee County, and an agreement was made to reduce the density from 40 units to 13 units and to require that the mangrove area on the east side of the island be set aside as a preserve. This agreement was attractive to the new owners who were interested in the nature and isolation this island offered as an alternative to city living. The public received a reduction in density on this property, new taxpayers, and a preserved nature area at no cost. The alternative to this option would have been for the, Long the town of Longboat Key, Manatee County, or the state to purchase the island for about $1 million at the time that was sold and to incur the liability of its upkeep and maintenance over the years. The large amount of exotic Australian pine trees on the upland interior, this maintenance could be costly. Some important questions concerning acquisition are, what would the proposed public use of an island entail? Would the public use of an island include picnic tables and garbage cans with a park ranger or maintenance crews? Would the local or state government then be responsible for people who are bitten by raccoons or rattlesnakes? Would the government be responsible for removing the raccoons if they became a problem? Does the government want to assume all these responsibilities or just protect the natural environment? Sister Keys now is an example of the same dilemma with an island that is physically quite different from Jewfish Key. Sister Keys is south of Jewfish Key and two-thirds to three-fourths mangrove area. The two large upland areas are isolated from deep water by the shallow, fringing grass lots. These upland areas have become populated by endangered species including sea oats and wire brush plant communities with gopher tortoises and abundance. The development of these keys would be very restricted under current regulations, if it is possible at all. The alternative to lim limited development would be the purchase of the island by state or local government. This would present the same problems considered for Jewfish Key. What kind of park would it be? Would there be a ranger, sanitation and garbage facilities, picnic tables and other necessary improvements? What would the expense of maintaining the island and cost of the liability to the government be? All these are important considerations concerning buying sister keys for a park. Regulations that are already in place could preserve most of the island in its present state while allowing private owners to build one or a few houses in a way that would have little, if any, impact on the native vegetation of the island. Of the four keys, only the largest one can be built on. This island has less than one-third upland that is not wetland and is mostly populated by endangered plant and animal species. What is apparent is that any home built on the island will need a deep water access point. The best place is on the east side of the north tip of the island, which has a protected deep water, over three feet access point, providing easy passage to the intracoastal waterway even at low tide, and it's presently a favorite anchorage for pleasure boaters and people who are visiting the island by boat. 
Just upland of this spot is a large area of Australian pine trees that could be removed to provide space for one to five houses without having to affect any native trees or plants adversely. A negotiated settlement could offer a unique opportunity to one or more people to have a home site like none other in the area and to help save the natural environment. The local and state governments could facilitate this by offering easy permitting incentives for building a dock and houses in this way, and environmentalists should be happy to see the island secure. At no cost to the public, all of the goals of the conservationists can be met, and free enterprise can thrive. Creative planning and thinking can provide for our future public, private, and environmental needs. The mangrove areas are quite apart from this upland planning. Regardless of the upland plans, the mangroves should remain intact and unaltered. The Sister Keys has a large black mangrove forest on the southeast part of the main island and large detrital pond system, which extends into the far interior. These natural waterways are densely fringed by red mangroves and feed the black mangrove basin with tidal waters. The black mangrove basin forest displays scrub characteristics resulting from nutrient deficiencies hypersaline conditions, or a combination of both of these conditions. This area was cleared with a bulldozer around 1965, and there are still decaying wood piles remaining from the large-scale mangrove destruction. The entire perimeter of the Sister Keys is fringed with mangroves. The Northeast Point has the smallest number of mangroves, with heavy Australian pine intrusion. The dominant mangrove in the fringe shoreline of the large northern island is the black mangrove, and the average height is 20 to 25 feet. The dominant mangrove of the fringe of the next largest island south is the red mangrove, and the average height of these trees is 25 feet. These findings provide data that raise questions about the natural history of these islands and mangroves. Understanding the way the mangroves colonize these islands may help us to cultivate and manage them better in the future. What are the reasons for the predominance of one type of mangrove in a particular situation? In considering revegetation areas, should it be of concern not only whether it was a historical mangrove area, but also with whether the previous mangrove area was black or red. I have concluded this survey with the interface of the text and the mangrove map. Both the text and the mangrove map can be found in the thesis room at the New College Jane Bancroft Cook Library. Both resources are meant to provide data that will present questions. Hopefully they will encourage further interest in the subject of mangroves on Sarasota Bay and provide, provide a base for future studies.